Hello and welcome back to episode 7 of the WD18 podcast. I'm delighted to welcome former Watford and current Aberdeen defender Tommy Hoban to the show. Tommy, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the pod and as we were just saying, it's been a busy period for you moving from down here up to Aberdeen. But how, how's it going at the minute, mate? Are you all good? Yeah, no, I'm all good. It's um, yeah, It's been a sort of a crazy couple of months really, so... Obviously, with all the the COVID stuff, I was uh, yeah kind of in lockdown like everyone else back home. Um, still just kind of finishing off my rehab, trying to get fit. Yeah, I got a call from Aberdeen, got the chance to to come up here in the back end of June now, so uh, about two and a half months ago. Obviously, yeah, I've been up here before, and it yeah, obviously didn't go quite to plan the first time with um, with injuries and stuff, but. Um, I had good memories of the club, you know, I enjoyed my time sort of here, got on well with the manager, the boys and stuff. So once they sort of offered me to, to come back up, it was kind of a no-brainer for me, really. Could you have kind of envisaged a, a better start? I know you, you, you featured on the bench, but I think it's two starts, two clean sheets, two wins. And also SP, SPFL Team of the Week. So I mean, it's not not too bad. Yeah, no, it's been um, it has it has been a really good start. I mean, um, yeah, to be honest, it's, it's been so long now since I sort of last played. I'm just trying to enjoy sort of every minute out on the pitch, and um, I, yeah, obviously it's I've had, I've put in I think two you know fairly decent performances, can, especially considering how long I've been out, but. You know, I still feel like there's a lot for for me to improve on, and I, I feel like there's a lot more to sort of still come and stuff. But but yeah, no, it's definitely been a, a great start, probably <laughs> um, better than I, I probably would have imagined. But um, hopefully, we can sort of continue that now because there's it's actually quite a good team up here, to be honest. Like you know, compared to well, even last time I was up here, we had a strong squad, but I think the squad's you know definitely stronger now. There's about 24, 25 first team players, so a lot of competition and. Um, Got a good, good couple draws in the Europa League coming up as well. We've got a uh, Viking FC away next week. And if, you, if we beat them, then we've got Sport in Lisbon away in the, the round after oh, that. So, tasty a few that. exciting ones to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, um, Wouldn't have got that F- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hope, hopefully yeah. soon, hopefully soon. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, obviously, a lot of people make the comparisons between the, the Scottish game and the English game. What would you say is the biggest difference from your time in the Championship compared to now in the SPFL? Yeah, the Championship is probably definitely a, overall a, a higher standard. Um, I'd say, I, I always say to people, I think there's kind of like three leagues in one up here. I think, you know, you've got your, your Celtic and Rangers, which are, in my eyes, probably sort of low prem, like high Championship standards. Like on their day, they're, you know, they're, they're good sides. Um, then there's probably the likes of you know ourselves, Aberdeen, you know, Motherwell, maybe sort of you know the lower end of the champ to sort of high league one, and then you've got some other teams that are probably you know sort of league one, league two standards. So you do kind of get um, a real kind of mix up here, but um, it, it's definitely you know it's you know, I think the Scottish the Scottish leagues in general probably get a bit of stick down in England. You know people think you know they're they're nothing compared to sort of the English leagues and stuff, but it's definitely still you know a good standard, a good level of football. And, you know, you get a lot of, if you look at a lot of players that have come up to Scotland, done well, and then gone back down to England and their careers have really kicked on. So it's, um, you definitely get some good players up there, yeah. Has the club changed since you were last there? I'd imagine the squad's changed a little bit, but in terms of maybe just the infrastructure, or is it, does it feel exactly like coming home again or is it a completely different club? Oh, no, it's actually, it's completely different. So the first time I came up, we were... um, so every day we'd we'd go to the stadium and get changed there. That's where you'd have like your food, get your showers, and sort of get ready for training and stuff like that. And then we'd uh, jump on minibuses and would have to go about ten minutes to the to like these local pitches, which um, I did find a bit strange. I'm not gonna lie, going from obviously Watford, where it was you know Premier League club and everything's like literally everything's done for you. You know, if you turn up every day, you've got you literally have to think about anything. You're you're carried to training literally <laughs> by by like the interns and stuff. But um but yeah, so that was obviously very different. But now they've um they've built a new training ground up here, you know, state of the art, really good gym, good um, you know, changing rooms, uh, about four sort of really good pitches as well. So it's it's you know, I'd say the equivalent of a, a championship club sort of training ground back down in England. So it's uh the club's definitely, you know, they uh they invested a lot of money and and one I think they definitely want to get a bit closer to the Celtic and Rangers and start challenging them a bit more sort of in years to come. So uh, yeah, I, I think a perfect place for me to be at sort of this stage in my career and you know to sort of 
kickstart things going again, really. You touched on Watford there, Tommy. I mean, I think, speaking on behalf of all Watford fans, it's great to see you back playing. Do you, when, you, when you think about your time at the club, is it, is it a positive one? Or is it maybe frustrating to an extent that it maybe didn't go for as long as you may have wanted to? I'd say when I, probably 18 months ago when I left and stuff, uh, if you'd ask me then, I'd probably say something different to what, I, you know, what I'm going to say now. But when I think back to my time at Watford, you know, I can't, I, I can't really say anything bad about you know the club like my time there it was it was incredible like obviously I when they signed me at sort of age 14 when I'd just been let go from Arsenal and um, at that stage you know I was obviously quite down after sort of having been let go and I think I went for a trial at, at Spurs didn't get in there and then you know thankfully Watford sort of took a chance I mean at the time I probably wasn't I was probably a bit behind some of the other boys in terms of sort of growing and stuff like that. I don't know if you remember sort of Nick Cox. The academy. Yeah, he was sort of yeah. head of the academy at the time and um, he was brilliant for me. And Dave Redinson, our sort of under-16s coach, and I sort of really kicked on sort of at that stage. And yeah, as I say, like my time at Watford started then and like, you know, from under-16s, like tournaments in the Milk Cup to, you know, our Youth Cup run, like, and then obviously breaking into the first team uh, that season with Zola, you know, then the season getting promoted. Like, I've just got so many good memories. You know, I could talk about them for, for hours, really. So, obviously, the, the, the final few years were, in, you know, incredibly frustrating. And I, I do, you know, believe sort of deep down that I probably could have gone a lot further, Um you know, at the club without without sort of the injuries and stuff. But you never know, like funny things happen in football. There's also been players that have, you know, gone and come back before. So you never know if I can, you know, have a good couple of years, good few years. Who knows if I can one day fulfil that potential that I offered, you know, because the club obviously, it really does mean, the club means a lot to me and will always have a, you know, a special place sort of in my heart. Uh, I, I do think, uh, I mean, again, on behalf of all supporters, I mean, we'd all be buzzing if you eventually came back, but... I mean, yeah. looking at looking at you know like your time there, you enjoyed it in the dressing room. Which teammates yeah. are you still friends with from there? I mean, we uh, we interviewed Jonathan Bond and he said he's still good mates with you. Uh, anyone yeah. else in there? Yeah, so I'd say the three. Um, make sure I don't leave anyone out here. But, uh, yeah, I'd say, <laughs> it's a bit, bit awkward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the three sort of probably that I'm closest with that you guys would all sort of be aware of who are kind of either in the first team or close to it would be Bondi, um, who I speak to probably still most days, really. I'm kind of in a running conversation with him on WhatsApp constantly. <laughs> um, Bernard, Bernard Mensah. Oh, yeah, oh, Bernard yeah. as well. Yeah, so he's, he's another one. Very good player. Obviously, it didn't quite work out for him at Watford, but, um, you know, we sort of came through the youth team together. I still see Bernard um, quite a bit as well. And uh, uh, Luco9. Oh, yeah, he's, he's a Sunderland now. He's Sunderland now, yeah. 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 Sunderland. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, them three, I, I still speak to, you know, very regularly. And um, obviously, Luke's Luke and Luke's flying at the minute. He's from, on his way to becoming a Sunderland legend, I think. Yeah, he is, and he's, <laughs> he's just yeah. um, he's just had a boy, hasn't he? Well, yeah, he hasn't given he birth has... to the boy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, little. I think it's a girl. Actually. Oh, girl! Sorry. Girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, though. Jake, anyway. Jake, so, Jake, yeah, Jake yeah. having a mare there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll let him know you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Pass, pass, pass on the message. You think she looks like a boy? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just going just going back onto onto Watford, Tommy. You featured re- obviously regularly in the 2014-15 season. I think it was 30 appearances in all competitions. Was that season potentially the, the highlight of your career? Yeah, well, obviously, I think the yeah, I'd, I'd say the the fourteen fifteen season would probably have to be the highlight. I mean, that whole like promotion journey was just sort of incredible. I I played a little bit, I think, at the start of the season. Then I didn't play for probably two three months too much. Was kind of on the bench a lot. And then I think around Christmas time, I kind of got in the team and had quite a good run then towards the end of the season. But it was, um, yeah, I mean that like that. That day at Brighton, you know, I'll, I'll never forget oh, that. That was man. just, oh, it word. was, it was incredible. <laughs> like, I mean, were you, were you both there? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember I, I seeing it back on the TV with, uh, I mean, you and Bondi running onto the pitch together when Vidra got oh, that yeah, second goal. Yeah. That's oh yeah, my yeah. Word, what a day. <laughs> the jubilation when Vidra put that away, and he was like the coolest man in the stadium when oh, he was celebrating. I was like, Vidra smile, mate. And he was just like, he was. <laughs> well, he was to, be so honest, to be honest, to be honest, he was saying he was the coolest man in the stadium. As soon as I've seen it, like that, it was him going through on goal. There was no doubt that you know the ball was really? going back there. Like, he, if you wanted anyone in that situation, it's always going to be him. Like, especially at that time, like that season and um and then when he was there before um that sort of 2012-13 season I mean he was just so like in, in front of goal like he was just 
if he was on it and you know on form, it was you know there was only ever going to be one outcome really. Is he probably the um, the best finisher you've seen at Watford? I, I don't want to not say Troy, and then he listens to this, <laughs> and then <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, obviously, yeah, all, all three of them. I mean, on their on their day when they were confident, they they're all three sort of top finishers. But I'd say. I'd say yeah, like Matty when he was when he was really really on it, he was he was you know properly on it, and he probably just had that sort of natural kind of look about him. Then you know Troy was Troy's just you know Mister Consistent like with with Matty and he, even um, Igalo like they'd have their off days, whereas you know Troy very rarely had an off day, and you know he's gonna get he was getting us you know 20 plus goals for what four or five seasons on the bounce there and you know you could always rely on Troy and then um yeah it got obviously Odium was just he was the sort of had the special bit of you know flair the tricks and all that which obviously all you guys as the fans love and um, <laughs> the scoop. and he exactly yeah. Yeah, the hello <laughs> scoop yeah I mean in you, you saw it in games I was I'm still a bit in training sort of day in day out like you think <laughs> Literally, he's done it twice. Think right, he's not going to do it again. Then yeah. there's me sliding off the pitch. And he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's done it again, but um, but yeah, and then uh, but yeah, he's obviously gone on to you know massive fights being at Manchester United and stuff. The kind of stuff we all dream of as players. So, um, so yeah, there's definitely been some good strikers at Watford over the years. The 13-14 season under Zola and Sanino. Obviously, it was a bit underwhelming having got to the playoff final the year before. Would you say the biggest problem that season was not having Vidra? I'd say it probably definitely, you know, had an impact on it. Um, he obviously, yeah, because he he, I suppose that twelve thirteen season, he made such an impact on you know not just Watford but the whole league, and obviously got his um, it was it was West Brom he went to after that, wasn't it? Yeah, it's West Brom. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, and he got his move to West Brom, and it probably did maybe uh, disrupt the team a little bit. We obviously signed new players, and it takes a while for people to kind of gel and stuff, but. Um, I don't know. I think I think that, that was probably part of it. But then sometimes in football, you know, you have a good season and you kind of think, right, we can just carry on and kick on. But you know, you forget all the other teams. Uh, you, you know, they're going to come back, work even harder to sort of get back up to where they were after they've had a bad season, you know, so to speak. And um, in some ways, even though that was a disappointing season, I think that was what we needed to then really kick on again the next season. I mean, we had the sort of you say 2012-13 we almost did it 13-14 we probably thought right like this year we're just going to do it because you know we were really close last year and then it, it didn't work and then um, obviously after that disappointment we probably worked even harder than the next year and um, and then finally you know it it all it all paid off and we you know finally got promoted for you personally that season Tommy I remember obviously you're naturally a centre half but I remember Slav played you at left back what, what was that like and what did Slav kind of demand from you in that system. Do you remember that yeah. run at Rotherham, the run at Rotherham away when you set up Minari and got round about half got, of I the Rotherham players? I, I, I do remember that very well. Yeah, Beautiful. yeah. That was um, that was actually under Sanino, I think. I think I was. Yeah. That, he yeah. was still there at that time, wasn't he? Yeah. I was... That was the uh, famous Lloyd Dyer. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it? wasn't it? Yeah, I remember that. that yeah, mad. giving him that the giving him the ears and that, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but sorry, yeah. Just going back to your to like the left back. What? What what kind of demands did Slav put on you playing in in that system? Was it did you find it difficult? So yeah, it was it was um, definitely challenging at the start. I mean, I'd always played as a centre half, and I'm I'm right footed as well. So yeah, playing there was was definitely tough. But yeah, you know, for, for me, like Slav was probably one of the best managers that I've actually played under. Sort of looking back at it in terms of. He, he made things sort of really simple um, for me on the pitch. So other managers, sometimes they overload you with information and, you know, things can get a bit kind of, you know, complicated and stuff. But I think he kind of knew that it wasn't my natural position, but he saw in me probably traits and um, aspects of my game that sort of really did suit that position, especially at that time. And um, and in the sort of the system we were playing. So he, he would literally tell me, right, get the ball. This is what you need to do. You're, like three passes, like and so I had sort of literally three options in my head every time I got the ball. He wanted me to play there, there, or there. So I just look up, see which one was on, and play it. And then defensively, he'd say, right, the ball's on that on that side. I want you here. As it comes across, you know, get out to get out to the winger. I'd go onto the pitch with four or five pointers that I just had to remember, and it and it it did make it quite simple for me. So um, so I quite liked the way he sort of. Yeah, his sort of management style in that way, and um, and I think yeah, as as the season went on, the more I played there, I, 
I started to feel quite comfortable sort of playing left back and I've ended up playing there now for Aberdeen as well sometimes. I know obviously that we look back on that season as Watford fans, the famous kind of four managers season with uh, Sanino, uh, Garcia, McKinley and then obviously Jukanovic at the end. Was was Jukanovic exactly what we needed at that moment? Because obviously we're on to our fourth manager and as you said there, it seems like he just made it really simple for the team and got the best out of pretty much everyone. Yeah, he did. I mean, it was a very, it was, I think, a very tough squad to to come in to, to manage at that, at that time because then we had quite a lot of sort of experienced players. You know, I think a lot of players that were worthy of starting week in, week out who probably weren't playing uh, because the squad was so big. And it was definitely, you know, that's always a challenge as a manager trying to keep everyone happy, especially when it's sort of senior players that you're having to sort of leave out and stuff. And um, yeah, Slav, Slav just came in and he, he, he did. He just kept things really simple, sort of on and off the pitch. The team was the team. If someone had a problem, you know, they'd go and speak to him. There wasn't any sort of, you know, like bullshitting people. And oh, I don't know if I can say that. Can I say that? Yeah, you can. <laughs> That's yeah, all right. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, he, uh, yeah, as, as I say, sort of his his management style sort of was very simple, sort of on the pitch and off the pitch. And that is, I think, exactly what that squad needed because the talent in the squad was, you know, incredible. And you look back at the players, what they've gone on to achieve after Watford, a lot of them, you know, a lot of them at Watford as well. You can see the quality in the squad. So I think all it needed was um, someone like Slav to come in and, um, and yeah, sort of put that, that kind of sort of simple management style on it and then the quality in the team sort of done the rest really so yeah as someone who played in both the 2012-13 squad and also the 2014-15 obviously went really close under under Jan Franco and then obviously Slab we did manage to do it in the end what do you reckon the main difference was was it just experience or was it maybe the mentality or was it just a better squad in general um it's hard to say because that, that season was older I think some of the football we played that year was oh it was incredible goodness. like yeah I'd say that <laughs> That, that that was probably the the best um, you know most exciting style of football that you know I played in my career and obviously it was so early in my career but um, and Zola was you know an amazing manager as well like and the best in training as well I don't know if you spoke to any other boys but literally like he would be the best player in training really? whenever he joined in like it's it's freaky it's like you couldn't get near him and he was still quite fit at that stage as well but um, but yeah I'd say I'd say I think overall the squad like the players that sort of stayed there obviously had a couple. You know, extra years kind of experience on them going into that 14, 15 season. And then we did, we had brought in, you know, the likes of Igalo and stuff. He scored some, you know, really important goals in that in that campaign. Um, you know, there was like like Daniel Toza, Minari, you know, quite oh, yeah. experienced heads. Ben, oh, ben Watson as well. Ben, of course. Like ben, ben only came in sort of halfway through that season. Even Matthew Connolly at the end. Matt Connolly, exactly. The promotion king who... <laughs> Is it about five promotions? I think he's had from the championship. Yeah, he's yeah, he's prolific. He's probably actually yeah. the only reason we did get promoted because he was there. Like he only ever gets promoted. So, <laughs> so um, so yeah, and then and obviously um, Adeline as well. Like, oh, so yeah, I'd say, I, oh, yeah, brilliant. exactly, yeah, and great guy as well, lovely guy. But um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd, I'd so I would say the squad was probably you know, of a slightly higher level that um, 14, 15 season. But then, and then m- m- maybe the 2012, 13 season we probably overachieved just because of, you know, Zola got us playing some fantastic football and um, it was probably a shock to the whole championship, you know, the, the way we played and the different style of players that came in that year, obviously from Udinese and stuff. We, we talk about how good Slav was, but what's it like playing under four managers in one season? Because, I mean, obviously the press seem to hate us for it. One minute you're in favour with the manager, the next you have to prove yourself again. Billy McKinley comes in eight days later, starting again from scratch. Just, I mean, what yeah. was it like at that time? Yeah, it was It was definitely tough. I mean, um, especially at the time as a young player, I was, you know, probably a bit silly sort of thinking back to it now. But I used to feel like, oh God, like it's even harder on me because... Yeah, when a when a new manager came in, they kind of instinctively tended to sort of revert back to the more experienced players. Whereas I was quite young at the time, and sort of every time I felt like I was just proving myself to a manager, he was gone. <laughs> then it's like some somebody else was in. But um, but that's you know that's probably just me just being a bit young and and um, you know a why me kind of the poor poor me kind of story. Which as I've got older in football, you know that's you can't think like that ever and. There's always a reason, and I probably wasn't ready at the time when their managers were coming in. And eventually, I did prove myself to them. So you know, that's just the way it, the way it kind of was. But um, so yeah, it, it definitely is tough. And obviously, every manager has their 
their own sort of systems as well that you kind of just get used to and then um you know a new manager comes in wants you to play a completely different style of football a completely different way so it's um it, it was tough and i think it shows you know gives even more credit to how good the squad was that year the, the fact that we had so much change but still, um, you know, obviously we're able to get promoted. Individually, Tommy, as well, I mean, you won Young Player of the Season that year as well. That must have been a really, really proud achievement for you. Yeah, no, definitely it was. Um, yeah, obviously that's any kind of reward like that is always special. And um, obviously to get it in promotion season was pretty special. But I think that season I kind of, I almost won it by default because I think I was the only young player that actually played <laughs> more than more than about five, play, five games. Then I also actually won it two seasons before. And that one meant quite a lot as well because I'd I, I got injured halfway through that 2012-13 season, but I'd been playing sort of regularly mm. up until Christmas. And um, the fact, obviously, I don't know who picks it. I'm not sure if it's the manager or whoever, but the fact I was sort of in that in that team, you had like sort of obviously Sean Murray was still playing a bit, um, Christian Batocchio, people like that, oh. Vidra, Vidra as well. But I think he probably won Player of the Year. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> why well, the only reason I got it, but. Um, but yeah, but so that that one was um, quite special as well, obviously, and that was my breakthrough season, so I was happy to, to win it that year as well. We've got the championship season starting on Friday, and uh, the question a lot of Watford fans are asking are, you know, what does this team need to have to get promoted? So, I mean, I think for the rest of this, we're going to go through each position in the team, the four, so the goalkeepers, the defenders, midfielders and attackers. And if you could just okay. tell us what each of them had. So, I mean, the goalkeepers that season were, we had Gomez, Bondi and Gil Martin, was it, the third one? Yeah, uh, really, what, what, yeah. What do you think, what do you think Ney had? Gomez was the experienced one, Bondi was the sort of young, hungry one, and then Rene sort of in between the two really had been around yeah. for a while like they kind of um it was a good mix and they were sort of you know able to push each other on you know in training sort of day in day out like bondi probably improved a lot sort of learning off gomi and then at the same time because bondi was so hungry to play that was keeping gomi on his toes and you know he was having to make sure he was performing and obviously yeah, i don't think gomi needs to be reminded to make sure <laughs> that he's performing he's, he does it you know week in week out without um he doesn't need anyone to be pushing him but but bondy was anyway and i think yeah that competition probably helped uh you know keep this their standards up to a high level and um and i think at, at that time as well gomi probably hadn't he, he came to watford having not sort of played too much before so kind of really wanted to sort of prove himself again so um that was uh you know that was his sort of personal sort of motivation and desire as well and i think that's always important for you know all players to have uh you know that sort of inner sort of fire to to really want to impress and you know show how good they are and then obviously their performances will then improve and then that's only going to improve the team's performances as well so yeah we were we had a lot of depth up, up front but i also felt there was quite a lot of depth at the back as well oh there was a there was there was yeah. a lot of depth believe me <laughs> i i was i'm well aware of the amount of depth there was in that defense i mean just to, just to list a few we've got um angela the song i think who was online yep. at the start of the season yep. Hugh cathcart, Deal, cathcart. Uh, yourself, obviously. Extrand, Matt Connolly then came in as well. Oh, so many. You're forgetting one more as well, Lloyd. Oh, Doily. Lloyd as oh, well. How could we forget how Lloyd? Could we forget? <laughs> I know. What a legend. He won't be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Paredes, Paredes. Paredes. As well. I mean, oh, really so good, just so many. How difficult was the competition just because of how much quality we had? It was very tough. Yeah, very tough. I'm not gonna, I mean, I felt like if I didn't perform one game, you know, I'd be out of the team. So. Every, you know, I, I felt like I had to perform, but it probably wasn't just me thinking that. Um, everyone was thinking that, and I think that's that's why that team did so well. I mean, every position there was so much competition. You know, you couldn't afford to have a bad game. So, um, so that really did. Um, yeah, you know, for, for myself anyway. You know, I knew I had to be on it until every game, and I think everyone else would have felt the same way. And uh, and it was tough, obviously, being being a young player as well at that time. You know. With the more experienced boys, you kind of you think, oh, the manager's just going to pick them, or you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But um, as, as the season went on, I sort of I felt like I probably matured a lot that year and realised that you know I am going to play. I was going to get games. Other people are going to play. They're going to get games. You know, it's a long season. There's a lot of people get knocks. You know, the manager changes the team, and Slav did actually change the team quite a lot. You know, change the system, so people were getting to play. And um, I, yeah, I think it. As, as frustrating as it can be when you're sort of in the middle of it and if you're not picked one game, when you look back, 
I think that squad depth is is crucial to you know getting getting out of the championship, especially with the amount of games there is. As I said, the squad depth for the back was good. The midfield, I mean, we could talk about it for hours. I mean, Almond, yeah. oh my goodness me, oh, what a player! What, 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 <laughs> how good, how good was Almond like in training as well as well as matches? Oh, he was so good. He was just so. He was just so chill, wasn't he? Like you just looked at him. It was, just, <laughs> it was like he was walking out, like walking down the beach, sort of every session. Like he'd just stroll out as if, literally, like I, he was me in the gym, like an hour before getting myself ready, like getting up for every session. And then Alman's just, yeah, just you know, rolling out there, just got his, got his cigar out, like just, you know, every session. The but professor. It literally, yeah, the professor. Yeah, that's what everyone called him, wasn't it? But he was. Um, he was he was a quality guy as well, I mean, and just yeah, just like such a good player, just so calm and he always made the right decisions sort of when the ball came to him, like he knew when to he keep it simple and then obviously see that killer pass and then and then he had that, that whip from the edge of the box as well where he scored a few, oh, few decent goals as well, away. didn't he? So, oh, and yeah, away I remember that well. one, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Was there maybe a player in the squad that you think maybe was underrated by the Watford fans that we maybe didn't appreciate as much as we should have? Um, I don't know, were you R- remind me of a few names. I, I think Akechi Anya. I thought he was underrated. Oh, okay. well, I always rated Akechi very highly. Like he yeah. was, um, he was so fit and worked so hard. Honestly, like he's the kind of player that you'd always want to be sort of in your team. Like, and like if I was playing sort of, you know, we played three at the back a lot. If Akechi was the wing back, yeah, I'd be happy because I know that he'd always. If I was struggling to get back, he'd be come steaming past me, you know, covering me, whatever. Like. It, he would always put in them sort of hard yards and stuff. And so, yeah, I'd say if, if he was under underrated, like, you know, definitely wasn't by me. And um, <laughs> well, then, then yeah, he's the kind of player that should definitely get more sort of credit and stuff. And But I think, he, you know, he did. I mean, people, the football world obviously saw it because he obviously ended up getting um, called up to the Scotland national team and was like, a crucial player for them for two or three years as well. And yeah. and then obviously when he left Watford, got, um, got a move to Derby, probably didn't quite work out there but you know the fact you know them clubs were sort of interested in him I think the football world definitely you know was aware of his ability and stuff and and, and he's and he's a great guy Ketchy as well like love Ketchy really nice guy I haven't spoken to him in a while but um but he's uh yeah couldn't couldn't speak highly enough of him that's it that's really interesting actually I would probably say from I don't know Min- I thought Minari was slightly underrated He'd always chip in with a crucial goal Minari yeah he was he was again yeah. it was hard because, because he um I guess there was so much competition in that sort of that midfield role. He probably didn't play maybe as much as um, as he, he probably should have done or, or could have done. And uh, but yeah, as you say, he was he was a really good player and another really sort of calm one. So he'd been there, done it all before. You know, played at the highest level in Italy, and uh, so he was he was a, he was a good player. I actually I enjoyed playing him. Minari. He was he was quite like a like a calming influence on the pitch. Like he he. Um, just kind of settled you down. Obviously, at the time, I was quite, I was obviously still quite young, and you know, there'd be games if I hadn't played for a while, I'd come in, I'd be quite nervous. He, yeah, you know, made me feel quite relaxed and stuff on the pitch. So, uh, so, yeah, he was another good one. Yeah, I have to ask you, Tommy, before we before we let you go, what did you uh, what did you make of your chant when you were a Watford player? <laughs> oh, what Tommy Owens having a party? <laughs> I, I, I still sometimes, sometimes I might have a bath and I'll sit there and sing it to myself sometimes. <laughs> Brilliant. Get myself going did, again. Uh, did Did you ever have one though, like with with uh, with Ben Watson and Minari? Of course. I mean, oh, we, we had loads. <laughs> <laughs> every every Friday night before the games in the Oceana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a question that a lot of fans are asking at the moment is regarding Troy Deeney with his future. I mean, it's uh, it's in question at the moment. How big is his influence in the in the dressing room? I mean, you saw it in the Championship and at the start of the Premier League era. What is he like behind behind you know behind the cameras? I've known Troy since he joined when. Was it 20, 2010 when he joined? I think yeah, it was. 2010. Yeah, 2010. Yeah. And yeah, so I've seen his whole kind of journey sort of through Watford, and um, he he is he basically he is Watford really. To be honest, I can't yeah I can't I can't say anything else other than that. I mean, his um, his whole story is just incredible. Like from where he was, like he, I think he almost left the club as well, sort of back in I think twenty thirteen or no twenty eleven, sort of the year after he came. And obviously, you know, his whole everyone knows his story and stuff. But the way he sort of developed as I think a player and as a captain was was incredible. I mean, he's definitely, in my opinion, a better captain sort of now than he probably was when he first got the job. Like, there's definitely a few times I'd 
you know, he'd done my head in sort of on and off the pitch with, really? sort of with, with, oh yeah, all like, you know, not in a, in a bad way, just in like a normal, you know, football kind of way. We've just winded you up. Literally, as a, be, be, being a young player as well, I'm sure you can imagine like sort of coming <laughs> through when you got Troy doing, you know, saying this, that and everything, but always trying to get in my head. Never obviously got in my head. Like you, you might, <laughs> you obviously say differently, but, um, but yeah, but no, honestly, he's, um, I can't speak highly enough of, you know, the impact that he has on the team. I mean, you know, there'll be times if the team's if the team's losing at half time, he'll be the one going around sort of getting everybody back up, getting everybody on it. He's you know, he's always he speaks to everyone at the training grounds, he, you know, knows all the young boys, knows all the staff. He's um he he really has, you know, like developed as probably a person and a captain and um yeah, it was a it was a pleasure to to play under him and yeah, as I say, probably at the time maybe I didn't appreciate it as much, but as you get older, you start to sort of, you know, appreciate what makes a good captain. Um, you know, once you see more of them in the game and stuff, and he he definitely was is one of the good ones. And um, and you know, his Watford career is incredible, and I think Watford are, are lucky to have had him over the past ten years. And I'm sure he'll get his statue outside <laughs> Vicarage <Vicarage's Yeah>. Road <laughs> one day. So what you're saying about people, you know. You know, questioning him and stuff now. I mean, it, it you know, that's that's normal in football. But give yeah. it if he if he does eventually leave, you know, give it a year or two. You know, people will look back and all they'll remember is you know the good times, and they'll definitely they'll definitely miss him. So, you know, I'd say to all the fans to you know to appreciate him while you still have him, and if he is still there this year, he's definitely the kind of person that will you know the kind of character you need to get out of the championship again. So. um so yeah, I'd I'd hope that the that the club do hold on to him if they if they do want to get promoted again. So yeah, <laughs> Tommy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, mate. I really do appreciate your time. No worries, I've no probably worries. kept you a little bit longer than you you thought, but it's been a pleasure having you on. So make sure you do go and give Tommy a follow. Um, if you are listening to this on YouTube, make sure you do subscribe. Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, you can find us all on there. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next time.